I'm going to read from the New Testament book of Philemon. Philemon, we one of the shortest, uh, 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 maybe not the shortest, but one of the short letters of Paul. Uh, if you consider letters that are written, uh, this would be the size of probably a handwritten letter. And it is a uh, wonderful uh, personal comments that are between people who love each other. It's a request. It's done in a gracious way. Uh, it involves uh, the gentleman named Philemon, and then also uh, he has a slave named Onesimus who ran away, and in the process of probably trying to hide and to disappear, uh, he ran into the Apostle Paul. I would like to think that was probably a divine appointment. The Apostle Paul won Onesimus to Jesus Christ. And now he is sending Onesimus back to make things right because Christians make things right. And this letter is written to Philemon encouraging him to, to allow Onesimus to come back. And that basically is the premise of the letter. But in the beginning and the greeting and the first words of the letter, uh, we see Paul's heart toward uh, a brother in Christ. And in that, I see great encouragement for you and for me uh, as we seek ways to be encouragers to other people, to love them, uh, to exercise our faith, uh, to be by someone's side, and and to show Christian love. And so needed today. Uh, so for our study tonight, let's look in Philemon 1, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. Philemon 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to the beloved Aphia, Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Some people believe that this would have been his wife and son, although we don't know that for certain. But they are having house in a church. Verse 3, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Now Paul begins by calling himself a prisoner in this case, it literally, he is a prisoner. Uh, he is in prison when he writes this, and he's in prison for preaching the gospel. Uh, Timothy is with him also, and of course, he's writing to Philemon, who he recognizes as a co-worker. So this is someone that Paul uh, has history with. This is someone that Paul knows the character of, of Philemon. And in these first words, we see some great, uh, attributes that we should uh, try to at least have in ourselves. He calls Philemon a beloved friend and a fellow laborer. Now, if if we could say that of each other, we have said a mouthful for a New Testament church. If I can say uh, that you are my beloved friend, that I know that you will stick by and I will stick with you and that we are fellow laborers for Jesus Christ, I believe that we have said everything that could be said that's necessary to serve the Lord together in a New Testament church. He also begins to give us some attributes that we can emulate in our own lives uh, and that we should seek not only that it might be said of us, but that it might be practiced by us. You know, this last Sunday, I talked to you about how important it is uh, not to worry so much about image, uh, but to be more concerned about who we are in Christ. So here we got a few of the attributes uh, that Paul gives us when it comes to Philemon. He said that I hear of your love. I hear of your love. And so in that, he is talking about the love that Philemon shows others and the love that he has for the Lord and the love that he has for Paul, the love he has for the church, the love he has for the lost. He's recognizing the love uh, that, that Philemon has. And we know that love comes from God because God is love. And the love, of course, that Paul is talking about 
is God's kind of love. It's a love that just loves. It expects nothing in return. It's not fickle. It doesn't up one day and down one day. It's not like the love that we talk about in our own lives. This is a pure love that comes from serving the Lord. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit. So he said, I hear of your love. He also says that I hear of your faith. I hear of your faith. And this is the faith, first of all, toward Jesus Christ and the faith that he has toward the saints. Philemon has faith in the Lord and his ability. He has faith in his fellow brother and sister. And that faith, of course, also is in the work of the Holy Spirit within us. Then he mentions your kindness, your kindness that you have. And so when we see these three things, uh, uh, and, and also if we uh, begin to think about, uh, he understands the good things that he has in Christ. So we see a well-rounded gentleman when we think about Philemon. Let's go back to the first part where uh, Paul says, I hear of your love. He says, your love has given me much joy and comfort. When Paul hears about his brothers and sisters, his fellow laborers, his dear friends, when he hears them uh, that, they are, that they're showing love, that they're acting in love, uh, that people are talking about their love, Paul said that brings me great joy and comfort. As a pastor, I will tell you without even hesitating, when people brag on church members uh, for their love that they've shown, it blesses my heart. Uh, when I hear people give testimony of how brothers and sisters in the Lord have stepped up and stepped in to help them, I have sent out a little bit of a, of, of an, of a request. Uh, uh, Pat Burge, that's still in the hospital, she was a little worried about Louie. Uh, Louie does not cook. And uh, now Louie is, is, is like, in his own words, he said, I'm like a dog. I'm going to find something to eat. Louie's going to find something to eat. And uh, so uh, we had taken some supper over to him. And then I sent a little word out to a few folks and just said, hey, if, uh, if y'all are finished cooking or, or have some leftovers that you might could put together and bring by Louie, I know he'd appreciate it. So called him the other day to check on him, and, and he didn't know I'd done that. But here was his reply to me. I said, Louie, are you eating? He said, man, I got more food than I can eat. People are bringing food by here. He said, I can't eat all the food that's coming in. I'm telling you that bless my heart more than you could imagine as God's people see a need or, or find out about a need. And I knew these folks would be uh, uh, able. I knew they cooked a lot, and I knew that they could probably bring some food by but what a blessing it is to hear someone brag on the people of the Lord and their kindness. And I know it blesses Pat in the hospital. And so for that, we're just so grateful. So, so he, he recognizes this love that he has. Now, not only does it bring Paul joy, but it comforts him. Do you know why love brings comfort to a leader in a, in a, in a church or a leader? Uh, in this case, Paul was a leader over the churches he planted. The comfort was that love never fails. Love conquers everything. When we are loving each other, there is nothing that's going to deter the ministry of the gospel within a group of people that are loving each other. So, so Paul takes this love of Philemon, and he finds great comfort in it, and he finds great joy in it. Now, I was thinking about today, what are some ways that we could show love what are some ways that Philemon probably showed love? And what might be some practical things that we could do uh, uh, to show love to others? And I just got a few. Uh, maybe you can think about this, okay? One of the ways that we can show love is like we did right at the beginning of this service. When there is a great need, we stop what we're doing, and we lift a person up in prayer, and we pray for the Lord to move, and we pray believing and we pray with faith, and we know that when we pray, God hears and God responds. That is a great way <clears throat> to go and to help people when they are, are, are in a way to show love is praying for people when there is need. Part of that is being observant and watching and listening for those opportunities to pray. Now, look, there's a difference between posting on Facebook or responding uh, to a text, there's a difference between folded hands showing you're praying or saying you're praying and actually praying. Let's make it a habit 
to stop what we're doing. It does, look, it doesn't have to be an hour-long prayer, but let's make it a habit to stop what we're doing when there's a need and to lift that need to the Lord right then, knowing that one day somebody may do that for us. So let's practice that. That's a way we show love, and that is taking others' needs to the Lord in, in heartfelt prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. Another thing is, is helping uh, those when we're able to. When we see someone, especially someone within our congregation, someone within our family, someone uh, in the community, when we know of someone and see someone who needs help, we can respond. We should. I spoke about generosity this weekend. But we can respond out of love. Love is the motivation, (coughs) excuse me, that would allow us to reach out uh, and to share with others and to help them. And look, there's another way. Sometimes we can't help those that we know need help, but you know what we might can do? We might can go find somebody who could help them. We might be able to find somebody who could help them. So, so not only may we be the one that, that does the help, but we may be the one that facilitates the help toward others. But that's a good way to love somebody is not to leave them out there in that need. James talks about when you see a, bro- a brother destitute, hungry, naked, you know, don't, don't tell him, uh, well, be warm and well-fed and clothed. Feed him. Make sure he's covered. Make sure that he's going to be warm. Uh, just to say the words or to think the words or to even have the fault doesn't mean that we're doing. Love is active. For God so loved, he gave. It's an action. And so in this, we can be willing to help those. And if we can't help those, we can maybe find some help for those who need it. Okay? Another thing that I think that many people need, and we may not realize this, but you know that people uh, who are hurting and struggling and those that that may need advice, uh, they need somebody who would be willing to listen to them. It's amazing how we can put ourselves in a position to listen, uh, just to let somebody talk it out. Sometimes just letting them talk it out will help them. Sometimes helping them put the words together and give them a, 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 some kind of a platform where they can speak and you'll just listen. Now, I've already told you all for years that I'm not a real good listener. Uh, and I have to ask the Lord to help me to keep my mouth shut and to listen. And the Lord allows me to do that. I'm not perfect at it. Uh, but I recognize the benefit of listening to people that have needs. Then when you listen to them, you may have an opportunity to give them some sound counsel. If someone comes to you and you love them and you care about them, you don't need to tell them what they want to hear. They'll get that from anybody. If you love them, tell them what they need to hear. Lead them to Scripture. Lead them to holiness. Lead them to a a place where they can repent. Don't listen. Don't placate someone in their sin. Don't, Don't tell them you're a victim. Don't do that. Help them to see that it may be they're reaping what they've sown. Help them to understand that the place they are may be because of poor decisions. Well, Brother Bud, that's not kind. No, it's it's hard. But that is real love. That's real love. And so we need to not only be willing to listen to somebody, but let's be in a position when able to give sound counsel, even if it means that we have to be straightforward, and even if it means sometimes we have to be unpleasant, that doesn't mean we don't love them. It's kind of like going to the doctor. Uh, when I went to the doctor one time and they called for a shot, I'm telling you, I did not want a shot. I had no desire to have a shot. I didn't go there looking for a shot. But I recognized by the wisdom of my doctor that that shot was going to be the quickest way that I would get better. We need to be that way. We need to be willing to inject sound counsel and godly wisdom and biblical wisdom. They don't need your opinion. They really don't need what you think about it. They need someone to listen to them. And then if they ask and you're able to give them counsel, go to the Word of God. And if you don't know how to respond biblically, ask them to give you some time to prayerfully consider what y'all have talked about or discussed and then come back to them. But that is a way that we show love to people. The Apostle Paul, when he is presenting his request to Philemon to accept Onesimus back, Paul said these words. He said, I could as an apostle 
I could bring it to a point of you obeying what I'm telling you. But I'm not doing that. I'm asking you. Paul had the authority and the position to require as an act of obedience to forgive Onesimus for what he did. But instead, he asked Philemon from love and from the relationship to Christ, recognizing that Onesimus is repentant, accept him as a brother. Accept him, Paul said, as you would me. So, folks, listen. We have to be able to listen to folks and then to give them sound counsel. Another way that we can love, and this is one that should be easy for us, but for some reason it tends to be the most difficult. We can forgive completely. And it doesn't matter how bad it is in Christ Jesus for what we've been forgiven, we in turn can forgive completely. Complete forgiveness. Biblical forgiveness is an act of love. Now, folks, you and I know that after we were saved and after we got over some of the, the sort of the childish parts of being saved where it seems like just everything is, is a mountaintop and we got into the grind of, of daily living for the Lord, there's times that we wonder, how could God love me? <clears throat> how could God put up with me? How can God forgive me? How can he continue? And in that, we recognize the depth of the love of God. That he separates, he separates our love from us. When he looks at us, listen, I want you to understand this. When he looks at us, he doesn't see us as the people who caused his son's death, which we did. He sees us as he sees his son. Now, folks, we can love and forgive others to the same degree. I'm not willing to. Now it's an act of obedience. The Bible says that we're to forgive others as we've been forgiven, period. It is not a suggestion. It is a direct command. But it is an act of love. When we forgive to that depth, we're practicing love. And so there's many that need to practice that love of forgiveness. And we can go into all the ramifications of that. But very simply this, biblical forgiveness, biblical forgiveness is taking the one who's offended and it is granting them forgiveness in your heart. Uh, there may be restitution needs to be made. You cannot make them accept forgiveness. But in your heart, you can grant it. You can give it. They need it. It can be between you and the Lord. But you leave it at that. You can't do what comes after that. Only the Lord can in the heart of the one you've forgiven. But when you forgive someone to that degree, you've taken them off the hook. That kind of forgiveness costs the person receiving it nothing but it will cost you something. So remember that. But it is an act of love. It is an act of love to forgive as we've been forgiven. Another way that I thought about is we can notice and be empathetic for the needs of others. We can encourage them. We can stand by them, and we can stand with them. Folks, people mess their lives up, and people make mistakes. We can come up alongside of them. The Bible teaches us very clearly that when someone becomes ensnared, when someone becomes tripped up, when someone becomes trapped, we're to go to them and we're to help them. We're not to crucify them. We're not to destroy them. We're not to gossip about them. We're not to talk about how sorry they are or how we saw that coming. We're to grieve over what happened, and we're to draw alongside of them and help them as best we can. So let's find ways to do that. And be empathetic, by the way, because you and I both know if it were not for the grace of God, anybody anybody listening to me right now or anybody who will hear this later through an audio file, it doesn't matter who you are. If it weren't for the grace of God, we would fail every single moment of the day. God keeps and preserves us so much in our daily lives. But let's don't heap on somebody else. Let's be empathetic toward them. And let's come alongside of them. Encourage means to pass courage along. Standing with somebody is to stand by their side, to lift them up. And uh, to walk with them, of course, is to walk step in step. And that shows love. And if you've ever been the recipient of that kind of love, you probably have never forgotten it. A final way that I thought that we could, we could practically love others is just simply to yield ourselves and to learn to serve others and to treat others 
like we would like to be treated. And I think it's important that we try to practice that, that we look for ways that we can love others and serve others and, and be there for others and be creative. You can be creative uh, in your ways to serve. Uh, but, but I think the, the ground rule for that is simply this. How would I want someone to treat me? Or how would I want someone to come alongside and to serve me? Which seems weird to even say because we all got a little pride. But to have someone willing to come and to be helpful and to be there is a blessing. Let's be that blessing to others. So Paul said, when I see the love that you have, it brings me great joy and it brings me great comfort. Then the apostle Paul said, uh, he said, Philemon, when I hear of your faith, now your faith toward Jesus Christ. In other words, when I hear that you're walking, that you're talking, that you're living, that you're acting, that you're reacting, that all points of your life exercises the faith that you claim to have in Jesus Christ. Now, folks, we can say we know Jesus or we can live like we know Jesus. We need to be living like we know Jesus. We need to be living like we are known by Jesus, and that is walking in faith. And so uh, Apostle Paul says, I hear of this faith that you have toward Jesus, and I hear of the faith that you exercise toward the saints. And, of course, that's being faithful to them. That's loving them, encouraging them, supporting them, uh, being there, and then, of course, being used to the Lord as they serve together, the leadership. The third thing that Paul says is that your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. Your kindness. Listen, you can be known for many things in this world, but when you're a kind Humble, generous, loving human being. People want to be around you, and you can be a blessing to them. I'm going to close in just a minute with some words from Dr. Charles Swindoll, and I think he just sums it up so beautifully in some of his study notes on Philemon. I'm going to read that to you in just a minute. Paul has a prayer for Philemon in verse 6, and just real quickly I want to cover that. In verse 6, let's read that real quickly together, and I'm going to read that out of a New Living Translation. He says, And I'm praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things that we have in Christ Jesus. Paul is saying, Philemon, put your faith in action, share your faith, and do even more as you understand, in other words, as you grow in wisdom, as you grow in experience with serving the Lord, of the, all the good things that we have in Christ. And so what Paul is saying is what we remind ourselves all the time. Our eyes should be on Jesus Christ, and everything we say, everything we do, everything we try to accomplish should be found in that relationship with Christ as an extension of what Christ is doing for us. When God blesses us, when God leads us, when God grows us, uh, uh, when God convicts us, when God... Uh, moves us toward other people, we should just simply respond. And that is putting all of that in action. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to share our faith, share our hope, tell others about the Lord. The better we know Christ and the more we experience his blessings, the more we're going to want to share those with others. And that's just what it boils down to. And that should be our motivation, to know more about Jesus, to experience more about Jesus, to be able to tell others how good he is, to be able to tell others how faithful he is, to be able to tell others how they need him. This is all, of course, an encouragement to us. Let me read to you a quote by Dr. Chuck Swindoll, and I think it's so powerful. And I want you to hear, I'm going to read it kind of slow, where you can hear what he said. He said, what was it that Paul appreciated about Philemon? He says Philemon had refreshed the hearts of God's people by his kindness. Then Dr. Swindoll asked some questions. Let these sink in. Do you refresh the hearts of the saints or do you weary the hearts of the saints? Are you the kind of individual that people sort of walk on eggshells around Or do people wish they had more time with you? 
Do others feel built up and refreshed by your kindness? Elsewhere in Scripture, we read worry, worry weighs a person down, and encouraging word cheers a person up. That's Proverbs chapter 12, 25. Would you think of a sincere and good word of encouragement for someone and then say it? Look for ways to lift the weight off the heart of your brother or sister. And that's what I want to close with in our study and our devotion tonight. Let's find ways to be people that refresh the hearts instead of bring weary to them. Let's be the people that people are comfortable around where they wish they had more time with us rather than wishing to get away from us. Let us build people up and refresh them by our kindness. And that certainly uh, is what we desire. Our Father, we come to Thee this evening. Thank You, Lord, for loving us. Thank You, Lord, that we can be conduits of that love to others, that we can encourage, that we can come alongside of and help others. Lord, that we can share our faith. We can be active in our faith. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity tonight. I thank you for your word that speaks to our hearts. I pray that it would challenge us and encourage us. Lord, it may chasten us. It may rebuke us. But nonetheless, the word of God is to do all of that, that we might be vessels that can be filled and used for the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the patience of our people. We ask you, Lord, to protect. Lord, keep us from from harm. Lord, this, this, this virus and all of the implications and all of the fear. But Lord, also the serious complications that have come from this. We pray, Lord, that you might intervene. We ask you, Lord, to uh, allow our church to move forward. Give us vision of what we're to be and to do. Bless our efforts. Lord, I ask you to help us to be the people that you would have us to be, to be about making disciples, of taking the gospel, of bringing people to hear the gospel, Lord, of helping people to grow in Christ. Help us to major on the things that matter. Help us to be mindful of that which is important. And Lord, in all things, we ask you to be glorified in our body, in our homes, in our church, in our ministries at our work, in our private time. Lord, when no one's there, God, that we might bring glory to you with our ideas and our minds and our actions. And Lord, we praise you and we love you. We lift these needs and we pray for the special touches that are needed. The miraculous touch, Lord, for that young Millis girl. God, do a work in her life. Help her lungs to recover. Lord, spare her life that she might come out of that hospital and we put her in your hands. And for her father, for her family, God, how we pray. We close our prayer time again for Brandon. Pray, God, that you would just preserve him and keep him and help him in this hour of great need. Remind us to pray earnestly and urgently for these needs. We ask and pray all of this in Jesus' name. And we love you, Lord.